Hello guys, today we're going to talk about the uh, Newton's method and we're going to I want to try to explain to you how I calculated uh, the Newton method using Excel in class so I'm going to go a little bit into detail how to calculate it. Now let's just recall uh, what is the main formula for the Newton's method. We calculated it in class and we said that the nth uh, value of x was going to depend on x of n minus 1, so in the n minus first step, and it would depend in this uh, form with f of x of n minus 1 divided by f prime of x of n minus 1, or n minus first term. Okay, so with this what we have is we need firstly the derivative, we can calculate that one, and that is just negative sine x plus the derivative of a natural log of x, which is 1 over x. So that is going to be f prime, and uh, then we have to start with an x naught. Now, let's, let's think about this for a second. We know we want a 0 for the function, so we want to find a value of x. Sorry about that. We want to find a value of x such that um, uh, that is close enough to to uh, the zero. So let's think about this function for a second. It has a natural log, so we know it has an asymptote at x equals zero that goes towards negative infinity. So we're going to be coming from a negative value. We just need to find a value for which the function is positive. We know that in between those two points since the function is continuous, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that we have a zero there. So let's talk about, for example, one. For x equals one, the natural log of one is zero, and the cosine of one, that's a positive number, one radian, the, the cosine is about 0.5 something, so it's positive. So we have that the log uh, at zero, we have an asymptote where the function is going towards negative infinity, and at x equals one, we have a um, positive value of the function. So x naught equals 1 could be a good idea, or 0.5, something like that. Let's grab 1 half, just to start there, okay? All right, so using our formula, the x sub 1 term would be x naught, I'm using n equals to 1 here, minus f of x naught, over f prime of x naught. So this, in this case, sorry about that, in this case that would be 1 half minus f of 1 half divided f prime of 1 half. And that is equal, let me use my, <laughs> my uh, mark there, and it would be 1 half minus, and you plug it in. Uh, so cosine of 1 half plus natural log of one-half divided by uh, negative sine of one-half plus one over one-half or plus two. Okay, and we would plug this in the calculator. The one thing you have to be careful is to keep your uh, calculator in radians so that these numbers, uh, the cosines, cal it, the angle is calculated in radians and then you get the right answer. Now, so I don't want to calculate all this, so let me show you how I'm doing it using Excel. So I go to a, let me try to leave enough for you to see here, so let's do a column with n, then let's call this column xn, and then this one will be xn minus 1, and we don't need it, but let's write f of xn, just to see how we're getting closer and closer to zero. Let's just number our iterations. Let's do five iterations. I wrote the tolerance up there, but I'm sure uh, five is going to be more than enough. So let's do this. Okay, so firstly, when n is equal to 1, x of n minus 1 would be x naught. x naught is the one I chose, which is 0.5. Okay, so we have that one. Now for x n, when n is equal to 1, I have x 1 right here, so I have to use my formula. 
So it's going to be 1 half minus, then I put parentheses for my uh, quotient, and then I have cosine of 1 half, uh, and I'm doing it wrong. Give me, uh, give me one second, let me correct that. In or what I was writing is right, however, I want to not have to type it every single time. So what I'm going to do, instead of using 1 half, I'm going to use this cell right here. So I use C2, which is this cell that has x naught, so that's the one half, minus, then I'm going to write cosine. Excel locally uses the cosine in uh, radians, so we don't have to worry about that. Plus the natural log of, and we also use C2. So what did I do? Uh, I, I, I just have the numerator right now, I have to write the denominator, but let me just show you what I did. I wrote cos, uh, cosine of C2, so every time I need x naught, instead of uh, instead of writing x naught, the one half, I'm putting the cell that contains that one half. So why do I do that? It's just because I want to be able to scroll then after. So then let me uh, divide by uh, the derivative, which is negative sine of C2, so I just move write C2 there plus I had a 1 over x which is 1 over c2 so I just wrote the function and the derivative and in every time I had an x I just substituted with the cell c2 and that gives me my first value 0.3787 okay so when I move to n equals to 2 when n is 2 x of n minus 1 would be x of 1 so I put equals and I just grab x sub 1, which is the cell B2. So I just get that one. And that's what I'm going to do every time. So I'm just going to scroll down and, and let Excel do its magic. And I'll do the same here. I'm just going to copy the same formula. And then right here I get my, uh, my iterations right here for xn. And let's add a few decimals. Am I doing it right? Yes. Let's add a few decimals there. And you see how the method is converging. And the uh, tolerance I was requiring was one, two, three, four, five decimals. Uh, real quick, by the, what is it, fourth iteration, we're already good enough. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, actually, the third iteration, between third and fourth, we're already at that tolerance. So, so you see this method when it converges it's actually pretty fast. So let's calculate what the function would be uh, just to see how it's getting closer and closer to zero. Um, so let's do the function is cosine. Instead of x I'm going to grab xn. So that's cell b2. So cosine plus the natural log of that. You see, we're not that close to zero at first, and then we go closer and closer up until, I mean, in the last iteration, Excel doesn't recognize with how many uh, uh, float points, how uh, it doesn't recognize it as anything different than zero. So, so that is how we do it, and then we can just grab our table and paste it right here. Oh well, it didn't come out as nice, but that's the idea. Let me show you just the picture how the graph looks or what the graph looks like. You see how you have one is around here, this is 0.5 and this would be the 0.397 whatnot. Okay so I hope that this helps so you can uh, complete your homework and put in all those formulas in Excel. If you have any problem let me know or write it in the comments if you're not in the class. Alright thank you so much and that's that.